Good morning. Today we are making special cookies for Claire. This is a really simple recipe that David found on the internet and we tried it once already and it came out great. So what we have here is I have three tablespoons of oil here. And I'm just using a vegetable oil. It could be canola, peanut oil, whatever you like to use. We have one third of a cup of stock uh, or bouillon broth. This happens to be chicken. You could use beef or if you have some soup made just grab a third of a cup of that. And we have one and a quarter cups of flour. This is just plain white flour. You could put a little cornmeal or a little whole wheat flour in here. I was also thinking if I wanted to make peanut butter flavor, I would just keep out one tablespoon of the oil and replace that with a scoop of peanut butter. But today we're just making plain chicken flavor. Just grab a spoon and we'll start to stir this up. This doesn't make a tremendous amount. It all fits on one cookie sheet though, which is nice. I have the oven preheating to 350. And if, you, if this is too dry, of course, add a few drops of water. You can always add a little flour if it's too wet. But you do want a fairly dry dough. I'm sorry if I sound funny. I'm having trouble with allergies these days. I might have to add a little bit of water to this. Last time I made these, it was kind of humid out. And the weather does affect how you... How this stuff mixes. I'm going to put a little bit of water in there. That should be enough. Yeah. Now this is not a dough that you have to knead, but I do kind of get my hands in there when it gets to this stage, just to pull it together. It just mixes better. In fact, what I'm going to do, and the recipe says it, it should be on parchment paper, but we made it last time. There was no problem with it sticking. This is a pretty good cookie sheet, though. I have a couple of older cookie sheets that, yeah, it probably would not have gone well on. All right, so here's the dough, and we just want to push it together until it all comes together and it's not crumbly. And usually you do that, just really get the heel of your hand in there. Give it a push, pick up all these pieces here. And it's only going to take a minute or two to really get this nice. You just want it to look a little smooth because then it will roll. We have to roll this out and it will roll out better if it's a nice smooth dough. So see, that's just about there. It only took a minute. Well, the original recipe calls for fairly big cookies, but we got a little dog. So we make these tiny little cookies because then she can have a couple of them and she thinks she's getting a whole bunch of treats. Okay, this is looking pretty good. So I think I'll get the rolling pin. Now these have to be rolled fairly thin. It has to be only an eighth of an inch and and that's pretty thin. That's pretty thin. So we'll just start out. Flip it over. I usually do this on the kitchen table. And the cookie sheet doesn't roll around as much. Alright, this way. Let's start getting you this way. Eighth of an inch is very thin, but they came out really good. After these go into the oven, what we're going to do is, um, they bake in about 15 minutes, but what we're going to do Turn the oven off and then leave them in there until the oven is cool. And then, okay, and 
that way. They'll be nice and dry. And they'll last long. That looks pretty good. So this is about how big you can see. Well, I don't know if you can see the edge there. That's pretty thin. Let's get that side a little more. Okay. Main thing is you want this nice and even so that can cook well. Okay, this looks this looks pretty good. Now we're gonna get some not exactly square ones on the edge because as you can see I don't roll out evenly. But that's okay. And to cut these, we're gonna use our handy dandy pizza cutter. And we're just gonna roll back and forth. And when you score it like this, I don't even have to separate these. When they're done, they will break apart really nicely. And as you can see, I'm making them pretty small. I'm going to cut sideways, too. But the pizza cutter worked really well. And it does not seem to damage this cookie sheet. I'm not promising it won't cut, damage your cookie sheet, but I'm just saying this particular one, it, it seems fine. So you can see we'll have a few little odd-shaped ones, but for the most part, we'll have nice square ones. And these just break right apart when they're done. Yeah, nice size for a little, little dog. I don't have any garlic powder, but if I did, I would put a little bit of that in there because she likes garlic flavored stuff. Oops, that, they're a little big, but that's okay. And we'll just do that. Okay, so they're ready for the oven. And what I'm going to do is put them in the oven. It's at 350. Turn it off after about 15 or 20 minutes, and then just let them sit in there until the oven is cool. So I'll show you what that's like when they're all done. So here they are. They're all done. They These cookies were in the oven with the oven on for about 15 minutes, and then I shut the oven off and left them in there for another half hour. They're still a little bit warm, but as you can see how they, just with the pizza cutter cutting them, they all broke up. But what I'm going to do before putting them into a container is I'm going to leave them on a plate because I want them to be absolutely cool before I put them away. Now as you can see how easily they just come apart if they are together. And the, the reason you want it them nice and cool before they get put away is that moisture will build up on the inside of the container. If they're not cool, just very easily break apart. So we want to make sure they're nice. And they will last in the container. Once they're in the container, they'll last and stay nice and fresh for about a week. And that's about as long as it takes for somebody to eat them up. In fact, we have a little taste tester under my feet here. Can you want one of these? Okay, let me turn this camera around. And take a look and move the cookie sheet out of the way. I don't want these to fall on the floor. Somebody would be very happy if they fell on the floor. And let me just turn this around here. Here's our little taste tester. Come here, Claire. Here. What do you think? Ooh. What do you think about that? I think we have approval. We have approval. That was pretty good, huh? That's still a little warm, but that was pretty good. Okay, so that's the recipe. It was very easy to do. Quarter cup of, I'm sorry, third a cup of broth, three tablespoons of oil, cup and a quarter of flour. And after that's all nice and mixed up, just knead the dough a little bit to get it nice and solid, roll it out to an eighth of an inch. And I did that right on the cookie sheet. And then I used a pizza cutter to make um, little, see right there, that one didn't break, but look how easy, to score it almost. 15 minutes in the oven at 350, then shut the oven off and let it cool. And I actually should have let it cool longer, it's just that I wanted to get the video done. But I'll leave these out on this plate till they're completely cool, stick them in a 
a jar or a plastic container that's airproof and they will last all week. Now of course if you have a larger dog you may want to make them larger. This is a nice size for a little dog because then she can have a couple of them and she thinks she's getting a whole bunch of treats. That's it. God bless you. Have a great day.